All right, let's see. Next question. A couple plans to pay for the child's tuition fee for four years starting eight years from now. It's a similar question. The current annual cost is 7,000 and they expect this cost to rise at an annual rate of 5%. In their planning, they assume that they can earn 6% per annum. How much must they put aside each year starting next year if they plan to make 17 equal installments? It's almost the same question with only the in, uh, inflation adjustment being made. Nothing is mentioned in the question with regards to the amount being constant for four years once he once the kid joins the college. Let me draw the timeline first. Time zero, 18, 19, 20, 21. The kid is going to be in college one, two, three, four years, 22. The kid is going to be in college from the year 18 till 22. Starting from 18 till 22, first year, second year, third year, fourth year. The college fee is 7,000 is the fee as on today. Which is going to be increasing at an inflation rate of 5%. You are going to be making 17 equal installments. Next year. From next year, no? Yes. Huh. So, I'm not making installments from today. I'm making 17 installments from year one. There is no installment here. Right? Now, all I need to do is I need to compute the PV over here. With that PV becomes the FV for this annuity. That's all I need to do. So, the PV part is a little different over here. Now, the question is not saying that the Tuition fee is going to be constant from year 18 to 22. So we cannot assume it's going to be constant. So what my value, my cash flow over here is 7000 into from time 0 till here is into 1.05 to the power 18. I will do the question without taking 7000, I can multiply 7000 at the end of the question. I can always do that, makes your calculations faster. I will not do 7000 into 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 every time. How do I go about with this calculation over here? No, you can't. Huh, that you can do. You can get the amount this into 1.05 into 1.05 into 1.05. You can do that too. Now, how would I do this question on the calculator? Since my cash flow is not constant at 18, 19, 20, 21, I will have to use the CF function. I will have to use the CF function. So do I need this again? Can I use a CF function altogether and not even bother about this annuity? I can't do that. I don't know these cash flows now. If I were to calculate the PV of these values today, I could have done C01 is 0 and frequency 17. But I can't do that. I'll have to use a CF function, but I will be able to calculate the value as on this date at time 17. Correct? So this becomes my, this becomes my C01, C02, C03, C04. And this is my NPV, which I will store as FV. Correct? And then the question is simple, N equal to 17, I by Y is equal to 6. This is your FV, compute PMT. This is very simple. How am I going to go about with the calculator? Let's do this together. CF, second zero. So my entire CF function is deleted. All the data in CF is deleted. CF zero, I'll skip. Because I want to calculate at time 17. I don't need the value at time 18. I need it at 17 only. FV will be at 17. 17 is last cash flow. So CF zero is zero. C01, 1.05 to the power 18 equals to enter i pressed enter c01 this got saved i'm not using 7000 right now i'll use the value 7000 at the end why will i enter 7000 three times four times got it 1.05 to the power 18 is what i've entered in c01 scroll down scroll down now i don't want to remember that much cash flow i'm going to do it again and again 1.05 to the power 19 equals to enter Arrow down, arrow down, 1.05 to the power 20 
equals to enter c03 stored c04 again 1.05 to the power 21 equals to enter equals to then enter got it now i go to the npv function i equals to 6 enter npv compute i got a value i will immediately press fv it is not working i cannot go jump from an npv to an fv function so I got an NPV at 8.953875 something. No, I will do into 7000 at the end only. 8.953875. This I have to write. I'm not being able to directly go there. So this was. And I like to take a lot of decimal places here because I'm going to multiply with 7000. If I round off here, I'll have a. Achha, haan, sorry, clear kya. So I press CEC. That's what I was wondering. You press CEC, your NPV goes off, but the data is on the screen. So I don't have to write it. I will not write it. I will just press FV. FV gets stored. I did not clear TVM. So, anyways, I'll write everything. N equal to 17, 17 N, 6 I by Y. PV, I'll put 0 because I don't know if I, if I had data in TVM or not. So I'll put 0 in PV and compute PMT. And after computing PMT into 7000, my answer is triple to 1.57. Is that the answer? Yes. Triple to 1.57, is that the answer? Hmm? Yes, That's it. Easy? Yes. And with this much, I just drew the timeline, but I did not have to write a single number on the paper as such. Mm -hmm. I was able to do the whole thing on the calculator without any calculation. Right? Got it? Next question. Sports car purchase for 2 lakh, finance for 5 years, annual rate 6% compounded monthly. First payment due in 1 month, the monthly payment is closest to. Don't even feel like writing the data of this question. So very easy question. EMI question basically. Purchase for 2 lakh. Dumb person purchase this car for 2 lakh. Because it's dollar, not rupees. As a pound, even number. Finance for five years. Five years n equals to sixty. Compounded monthly, six percent compounded monthly. I by y is equal to 0 0.5. Don't write 0 0.005. 0 0.5 percent. First payment due to month. Monthly is closest to. What is it? What's the answer? 3867. Got it? Done? Very easy. Next question. Quick. Stated annual interest rate of 6% compounded quarterly. The level amount that deposited quarterly will grow to 25,000 at the end of 10 years is closest to. Again, very easy question. 10 years. Achha, that deposited quarterly, we need the PMT part, 25,000 over here. Very simple. This is FV. 40 is equal to N because it's quarterly rate. Na? And you're depositing the amount quarterly as well. Okay. 6% quarterly, that means 1.5 is I by Y. Compute. PMD, which is 461. Easy. I hope you had tried all these questions earlier. Done? Comfortable till here? Next. A client invests 20,000 is a good question. 20,000 in a four year certificate of deposit. Certificate of deposit is simply a instrument like you have a savings account, current account. You have different ways in which you can deposit money in the bank and earn interest. So there is a certificate of deposits, a short term money market instrument. You learn money market, capital market, etc. in another class, in another topic. Money market is basically when you're investing in the short term. 
when you're talking about raising equity, 10-year loans, 5-year loans, they're capital market, borrowing capital, long-term capital. And short-term is money market instrument, money, liquid fund. These are money market instruments. All right. You learn these things in detail. So 20,000, you're investing in a CD that annually pays interest of 3.5%. The CD interest payments are automatically reinvested in a separate savings account, which is earning an annual rate of 2% compounded monthly. At maturity, the value of the combined asset is closest to. Okay. How many years at the end at maturity? What is the maturity? Four years. Four years. Take it. See, first of all, zero, one, two, three, four. It's a four year certificate of deposit, a four year instrument. You're investing how much over here? 20,000 is your investment. Correct? Yes. Every year it is giving you an interest of 3.5%, right? Pays an interest of 3.5%. 3.5% of 20,000 is 700. Be very attentive. You are depositing this 700 into a savings account, into a separate savings account, and that savings account is earning 2% monthly rate. Right? If this 700 is going over here in this account, what is a reinvestment figure at time one? Please tell me. 20,000, right? It's not 20,700. The compounding happens if you reinvest that amount in the same account. Then interest ke upar interest. On interest, you earn interest. But if the 700 is transferred to another account altogether, there is no interest on interest in this account. This is a certificate of deposit and this is a savings account. You deposited 20,000, you earned 700, you took out that 700 and invested somewhere else. This 20,000 will remain 20,000 only, na? This 20,000 investment is going to give you 700, 700, 700, 700 and 20,000. Correct? Why is it giving you a constant 700, 700? Because the 700 you are depositing in a separate account. So this account will have an investment of 700, 700, 700, four times. My future value will have 20,000 from this account. This will not become zero. And this will not become 20,000 into 1.035 to the power four. No, why? Because this three and a half percent is not getting compounded every time. I'm taking the 700 out. Now, all I need to do is, I need to compute the FV of this amount. What is the FV over here? What is the FV over here? Now for this FV also, this is acting as a PMT. Yes. N is equal to 4 years because there are 4 PMTs given. The number of cash flows you are getting is 4. But the rate is given on a monthly basis. Right? So now the I by Y, yes, has to be converted into an annual rate. And you can't put N equal to 48 over here because you are not getting 748 times. N has to be 4, the period has to be 1 year. So what is the annual rate? The annual rate will be 1 plus 0 0.02 by 12 to the power 12 minus 1, which is? 2.018436%. Hmm. 2.018436%. So this becomes 2.018436. Compute FV. And once you compute FV, you got the, you got to add these two values. So I deposited 20,000 in a certificate of deposit, which is giving a three and a half percent annual rate. And that 700, 700 annual rate is getting reinvested in another account. So this 20,000 will remain 20,000 at the end of four years. The interest is going to be common is a constant because it is getting re, it is not getting reinvested. But these 700s of four times is getting compounded. There are only four 700 amounts. They are getting compounded at a monthly rate, but the investments are not being made on a monthly basis. Tell me. So I have to convert this into an annual rate. What is the answer for this one? 2885.90. So four 700 is 2800. Plus the interest, compounded interest and all is 85.92 only. 2% rate there. Right? 
85 is what I've earned as interest on these reinvested interests of this 20,000 investment. Obviously, my if I'm if I'm looking at an average kind of a return return kind of a thing, it should be somewhere between two and three and a half. No, it should be a little more than three and a half. Three and a half. There is a compounding, no? Three and a half. I'm getting on that part. I'm getting a little bit of compounding done. The reinvested cash flow is not compounding at three and a half percent. The reinvested cash flow is not getting compounded at three and a half percent. Three and a half percent is my simple interest rate, if you call it. I'm getting like a three and a half percent simple interest. The interest part is getting compounded at two percent separately. So compounding is not going to happen at three and a half percent per se. Anyways, got the answer. So my answer will be: Do not make the mistake. It will be twenty-two thousand eight eighty-five point nine two. Don't forget to add the twenty thousand. Tell me. Got it. Obviously, if I put three point five as i by y, four as n. Twenty thousand as PV and compute FE two two nine five zero. That is one of the options. Two two nine five zero. Obviously, two two nine five zero. If this, if I would have compounded at three and a half percent, what would happen in a compound interest? Twenty thousand becomes twenty thousand seven hundred. Twenty thousand seven hundred into one point zero three five. But here, what are you doing? Twenty thousand. Into one point zero three five, seven hundred into one point zero two zero one eight four three six. That's what you're doing. Therefore, the future value of twenty thousand into one one point zero three five to the power four is twenty two thousand nine fifty, and here it is eight eighty five. Do you see this is higher? Because had it compound at three and a half percent, the entire twenty thousand and seven hundred compounds at three and a half. Then this entire amount compounds at three and a half. But what have we done? Twenty thousand is earning three and a half, but the seven hundred is not getting compounded at three and a half. It is getting compounded at two point zero one eight percent. Getting the idea? So my future value is less than the previous option. Had it compounded at three and a half percent annually, so my actual my effective rate is going to be a little less than three and a half percent. If you see, because my interest is not getting compounded at the same rate. Bolo clear? Good.